sit for the welcome. Welcome all of you to the service of morning prayer this morning. And if you are a visitor amongst us, uh, you are most welcome indeed. Again, I'd like to express thanks to all who have been involved in preparing the cathedral for this service, to those who cleaned it, and to those who are attending the steward duties today. Again, we thank Dr. Derek Collins for playing the organ, and his wife Joanna, who will sing during the service. She will sing, I know that my Redeemer liveth, from the side of by George Frederick Handel. On the back of the order of service, you will see a request to provide contact details about yourself and your presence here today. Please provide this information and leave the order of service at the porch as you leave at the end of this service. This information is also requested for any children and for any visitors here this morning. Please make sure that you do have an order of service and that you complete the details before you leave. The service today is being recorded by Robert McGonagall and will be available to view on the Cathedral Facebook page later this afternoon. Again, I'd like to express our thanks to Robert and Linda for all the time that they devote to this aspect of parish ministry. It helps to keep parishioners who are unable to attend church connected with the Cathedral. And finally, at this point of the service, it is with regret that I inform you of the death of Sir John MacFarland. He died at his home in Glenburn Cottage, Blueberry Road, on Friday, and his funeral service will be held here in the cathedral on Tuesday at 12 noon, followed by private burial at Carrigan's Parish Church Burial Ground. The service today is the service of Morning Prayer Order 1. It begins on page 84 of the Common Prayer, and I invite you to stand as we worship God. ourselves and the truth is not in us, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. Dear beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor clothe them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father. But confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands. To set forth his most worthy praise. To hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy way to thy caution. We have followed too much the devices and the eyes of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help for us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant the most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. 
Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent, and hath faithfully believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his holy spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our hearts O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, forever and ever. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord is in praise. The first chapter for today is the night day, which you'll find on page 87 of the prayer book. And we read the canticle by alternative authors. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us have the rejoicings and the heart's salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And show ourselves glad in the sounds. For the Lord is a great God. And a great King of all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth. And the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we will hear the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you would hear his voice, our own march of us, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, prove it be the so Forty years long was I grieved in this generation, and said, It is the people that have prepared in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. On whom I swear in my love, that they shall not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, for ever without end. Amen. The psalm appointed for this Sunday is number 114. Find the psalm on page 727 of the prayer book, and we read the psalm by alternate hours. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from the people of a strange tongue, Judah and Kings and the sea saw that and fled. Jordan was driven back. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you were driven back. You mountains that you skipped like rams. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, who turns the hard rock into a pool of water. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, 
first lesson is written in the 14th chapter of the book Exodus, beginning to read at the 19th verse. And the angel of the Lord who is going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and the dead of the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on the dry ground, the waters formed a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning, I watched the Lord in the color of fire and cloud look down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into the land. He clogged their chariots so that they turned to the Pithily. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot riders. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and that dawn. The sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The water returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the water formed a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and believed in the Lord, and in his servant Moses. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise Thee, O God. We praise Thee, O Lord. All the earth doth worship Thee. Father, to the old angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To the children and servants, to the Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath. Amen. The glorious company of the apostles praised thee. The noble army. The holy church. The father of an infinite majesty. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ. Thou sittest at the right hand of God. We believe that Thou, we therefore pray Thee, help Thy servants. Make them be numbered with Thy saints. O Lord, save Thy people and bless Thy heritage. Day by day we magnify Thee. 
Vouchsafe, O Lord. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us. O Lord, in thee have I trusted.
Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 95 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the Queen. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. Collect of the 14th of Sunday after Trinity. You can find this collect at the bottom of page 291. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, Give unto us the increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise. Make us to love that which thou dost command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Second Collect for Peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of comfort, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all the souls of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together the words of the third Collect from Grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same of thy mighty power, and grant that this day we will fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us God of infinite love, grant that we be know your mercy, may rejoice in your forgiveness, and gladly forgive others for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And a prayer on this 14th Sunday after Trinity for the Anglican Church of South America, and a prayer for its bishop, the most reverend, Gregory James Venables, presiding bishop of the Anglican Church of South America and Bishop of Argentina. Remember, O Lord, your church in South America and in Argentina to deliver from all evil and to make it perfect in your love. Enlarge its borders through the preaching of the everlasting gospel and gather the faithful from all the ends of the world into, into the kingdom which you have prepared. Bless its bishop, the most reverend James Fenero, for yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. We ask it for the glory and the honor of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
We pray for the Church of Ireland and for our Archbishop, the Lord Reverend John McDowell, Archbishop of Armagh, Primate of All Ireland and Metropolitan. We also pray for the Diocese of Down and Dromore, for the Right Reverend David McClay, for our Bishop in the Diocese of Derry and Rafoe, the Right Reverend Andrew Forster, for the parishes of Fort Upper and Lower, and the Reverend Judy McGaffin, Bishop's Curate. Lord, we beg you to visit with your grace and heavenly blessing your church in this land. Give to our bishops and pastors wisdom and holiness and unwearied zeal for souls. Give to your people the increase of faith, hope, and love, and grant us to be of one heart and one mind, that we may diligently do your word and show your glory to the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for the work of the Leprosy Mission in Nigeria. Grant to all your workers in the Leprosy Mission of Nigeria your blessing of those who seek to work with those who suffer from leprosy. Give them safety as they travel to remote places to show Christ's love to the poor and marginalized people affected by leprosy and all the disabilities that arise from this terrible disease. Almighty Father, giver of life and health, look mercifully on those who are stricken with leprosy and reach out your hands to cleanse and heal them as did your blessed Son. We ask for this thing for the sake of your blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and a prayer for those who have died in the faith of Christ and for those who have been bereaved. We pray for the family and brothers of Roy Adams, for his wife Elizabeth, for his grandchildren Victoria Christopher, and brother David and sister Elizabeth. We also pray for the family and relatives of Olive Robinson, her grandson John Heatherton, his wife Mandy and their family, and for the family and relatives of the late Sir John McFarland, his wife Mariette, his children Sean, Anthony, Fiona and Stephen, and grandchildren Emily, Amelia, Max, Rory, Shane, Patrick, Eliza, and Patty Jr. Grant to the Lord to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may have the strength to meet the days to come with steadfast and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of thy great goodness in days past and in the sure expectation of a joyful reunion in the heavenly places. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who hath given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant our request, fulfill not the Lord the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this word knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
because she had long-term resentments that she held against the men in her life. Her father had greatly favoured her brother and gave, had given him the family business. Her brother offered her a menial job in the family business after she divorced. Her former husband was wonderfully successful with a huge income but was very reluctant to support his children financially or to provide alimony for his former wife. Her sons resented the divorce and constantly told their mother how much they wanted to go and live with their dad. In short, she was angry and resentful. And what was worse, the reason she was angry and resentful was because she had carefully analyzed her situation and was right. Her rector listened carefully and said, you are really justified in being angry. But what is being angry doing to you? The woman poured out a litany of pains, health problems, loneliness and depression. Forgiveness was offered to her as a possibility. The woman was unable or unwilling to forgive. The men in her life did not change their way of behaving toward her. Her health and well-being continued in a downward spiral, even though she was totally justified in her anger. Sadly, we have in us a need for vindication when we are injured. There are disciplines in law and equity for assessing responsibility for injury, for assessing the degree of damage that an injury has done, and for determining a payment to restore the damage. But I find that no one who has ever gone through a difficult lawsuit leaves satisfied. We even have a car bumper sticker that says, don't get mad, get even. So it may be that the way most of us imitate God is by claiming that vengeance is ours. And this is contrary to what God said. So it may be that the torture described in today's text is just what happens to us when we refuse to forgive. The choice seems to be whether we will be right and miserable, wrong and miserable, or whether we will be forgiving and happy. There are some very clear words about this from Jesus that we all know. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Or in the familiar translation, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. My friends, the door to joy and happiness is forgiveness. It seems to work this way. First, when we forgive, we join with God in doing one of God's essential works. Doing the will and work of God brings fulfillment to our lives. Secondly, forgiveness brings peace to our relationships. Any parent can tell stories of dealing with the injuries, offences and disobedience of children. However, without forgiveness, children cannot be brought up. Marriage, as our institution and way of being, can't be sustained without mutual forgiveness. Married people can't help 
or can't keep perhaps from injuring each other. So without forgiveness, the injuries become wounds and the wounds become fatal. And even more ironic is the reality that most of us can't change destructive behaviour until we find that we don't really have to change it. One man tells a story. He said, I did things that betray all of my father's values. He kept forgiving me. I finally did something that was so bad that I knew he would never forgive me and would banish me. He forgave me. I realized that there was nothing that I could do that would make my father stop loving and forgiving me. And that realization, knowing that I was loved no matter what I did, meant that I didn't have to do any of those things anymore. This story is a minor illustration of God's work in our broken, sinful rebellion. The cross is God's ultimate act of love and forgiveness. And what God did through Jesus was not correct or legal or right. Rather, it was pure love. God said to all humanity, on that cross of Calvary, there is nothing that you can do that will end my love for you. So it irritates God when we don't share the love and forgiveness we have received. So my very simple message this morning is, so forgive someone. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who is crying as a just nature, Almighty Majesty, our dominion and glory, henceforth and forevermore. Amen.
Let us pray. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, may we clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. May we bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances we may have against one another, forgiving as the Lord forgave us. And over all these virtues, may we put on love, for we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.